Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to my channel. Click the like button if you like. Subscribe if you like. Share if you like. <laughs> it's good to see everybody. Hope everybody had a beautiful Sunday. Pretty windy here in Iowa. Pretty windy. But uh, it was nice. Not, not too bad at all. Getting a little chilly at night now. Yeah, a little bit. Almost middle 50s at night. It's getting a little chilly. <laughs> but anyway, here we go. Now, when Florida Governor Ron DeSantis was elected as governor of Florida in 2018, the state had far more Democrat voters than Republican ones. This made such a difference that DeSantis' victory over Florida Democrat Andrew Gulliam was narrow. Democrats have used this as an ammunition to say the current governor will be easily defeated. However, the facts aren't on their side. For starters, every single poll shows DeSantis ahead of Florida Democratic challenger Charlie Crist. On top of the polls, DeSantis has raised over $100 million, historic amount of funds for any candidate in a governor's race. However, one of the best factors working in DeSantis' favor is the way Florida voter demographics have shifted since he was elected. Florida Republicans for the win. DeSantis' leadership has attracted thousands upon thousands of new residents uh, to the state. It turns out that many Americans prefer freedom and liberty over fascism and lockdowns. Well, I don't blame a mayor. Since 2018, the Florida Republican Party has been an uptick of more than 509,000 new voters. The outnum this outnumbers by many times over the number of new voters Florida Democrats managed to pick up over the same time period. Florida GOP Vice Chairman Christian Zegler has weighed in on what this massive uptick in new voters means for the state's Republican Party. After noting DeSantis is focused on issues of greatest importance to Flor Floridian, Floridians, Ziegler said the current government's leadership is resonating with the state. However, the vice chairman made it clear that Florida Republicans are just warming up. Mm. Ziegler confirmed the GOP of Florida will continue working to ensure access, success for DeSantis safeguard the liberties of Floridians and make the Florida Democrat Party a relic of the past. Strong momentum behind DeSantis re-election campaign. Many on the left would like to paint a narrative that DeSantis leadership is the result of extremism and only hateful individuals support him. After all, this is the key talking point of Christ as he works to unseat DeSantis. However, the leadership of the Florida governor is rendering so much success that he's pulling in bipartisan support while seeking re-election. Just earlier this week, Palm Beach County Commissioner Dave Kerner came out with an endorsement of DeSantis. Kerner said the Florida governor has proven himself to be a worthy leader and he'll be voting for DeSantis in, in November. The county commissioner also expressed that the state cannot afford to defund the police, which is something Christ continues to campaign upon. Meanwhile, DeSantis is proving through his leadership that Florida is a pro-police state. Boy, I don't know. Democrats aren't happy with North Carolina's voting laws. No, they're not happy. After major problems in the 2020 presidential election, Republicans across the nation worked on election security legislation to prevent any repeat issues in the future. Democrats immediately got to work demonizing the, C the GOP and claiming the party wants to keep minorities from voting without even reading election bills proposed in states like Georgia. Democrats wrote them off as voter suppression that might be defeated at all costs. Now at the same time, Democrats have been making moves of their own to switch elections in their favor. Some examples of this include pushing leftist 
Get out of the vote. G-O-T-V. Get out the vote. G-O-T-V. Initiatives are working to pass federal congressional bills that would rob states of their rights to control their own elections. Rats are up to no good. Now in North Carolina, Democrats are setting their sights on dis dismantling the state's voting rules. Trouble in North Carolina. North Carolina Supreme Court Democrat members are on a collision course of opening the state up to massive voter fraud. This is seen by these members uniformly voting in favor of updating North Carolina's congressional maps in a way that works against Republicans. On top of that, Democrats in the purple state working to potentially take away North Carolina's voter ID laws. The left has been against voter ID requirements, deeming them as racist against minorities. Ironically, though, many anti-voter ID Democrats have been pro-vaccine passports. <clears throat> Oral arguments over the constitutionality North Carolina's photo voter identification law will be held next month. The state Supreme Court has decided in another ruling determined along partisan lines. North Carolina is just one of the many examples. Democrats across the nation say voter ID requirements for people wanting mail-in ballots to request them rather than states just mailing them out unsolicited. And further election laws are suppressive and discriminatory. As leftists throughout America try to re <clears throat> rework excuse me, voting laws to let non-citizens cast ballots and more, they're claiming it's all about democracy. In actuality, this is about Democrats trying to seize total and absolute power. <coughs> Excuse me, I can see that. As top-down effort, as Democrats across the United States work to undo common sense election security laws, they've got the support of the White House. It wasn't too long ago that Biden administration opted to sue Arizona over its election security rules. Arizona Governor Doug Ducey responds to Biden's lawsuit against the state's election integrity laws. You have to be a citizen and you should be alive on the day that you vote. Yes, because I read somewhere, um, again, that they got votes from dead people that had been deceased. Now, how, how can that happen? You know, how can that happen? If the Biden administration wants to challenge that, we'll see them in court. In the meantime, Biden is also dispatching federal agencies to play a role in voter initiatives across the United States. As the president does this, the Department of Justice is refusing to release a memo that would explain exactly what the work of these agencies will entail. Republicans blast Pelosi for extending House proxy voting past midterms. Now, th this is something else. <clears throat> this is really something else. I just don't get it. But uh, she wants the proxy votes. I thought I had the article here, but it went bye-bye. <clears throat> Story of my life. Uh, so, proxy votes, you can have someone in the house vote for you, and you don't even have to be there. Now, you have a job at the White House, like Pelosi, Speaker of the House, but she wants proxy votes so someone else can vote for her while she's out doing what whoever knows and still be getting paid. <clears throat> now, to me, that is not right. That's not right. Oh, my goodness. It's just one thing after another. Fact checkers refuse now to call out the White House press secretary. Americans are constantly told that fact checkers, FAC, F-A-C-T, not fat, <laughs> FAC, like it's a fact. 
checkers are nonpartisan, unbiased, simply designed to ensure everyone gets an accurate account of what's happening in the country. However, with the rise of misinformation, accusations being weaponized against various individuals, this calls fact, fact checking into question. Many claims that were previously fact checked as misinformation, such as assertions that COVID-19 vaccines don't stop virus transmission or infection, were later proven to be accurate. To make matters even worse, the fact checkers are not as objective as some would like to believe. This has been proven by the lack of fact checking being done of White House Press Secretary Karine Jean Pierre. Yeah, I think I pronounced that right this time. I didn't do so good on a video yesterday. <laughs> but it's Pierre. Yes. Okay, since taking on the job at the White House Press Secretary, Jean Pierre has made a mountain of statements that simply are not accurate. Bless her heart. I feel kind of bad for her. Some of the most recent examples include Jean Pierre saying the Biden administration created 100 million jobs in addition to her alleging that no one is just walking across the southern border. In spite of this, not once has the press secretary been fact-checked by the Associated Press, factcheck.org, Reuters, or most other prominent established outlets that are known for differentiating, different, differentiate, <clears throat> yeah, differentiating facts from lies. I can say that. You know, she kind of got put in a rough place when the other one walked away. <clears throat> and she's doing the best she can in my book, but bless her heart. Some people have argued the fact checkers aren't responsible for correcting presidential spokespersons, but rather tend to focus their efforts on lawmakers. However, this is not true. Former White House Press Secretary Kaylee McKinney was regularly fact-checked. The same also goes for Sarah Huckabee Sanders, another former press secretary who worked for the Trump administration. Even former Biden Press Secretary Jen Psaki, yes, Jen Psaki was fact-checked on a few occasions. Why Jean Pierre isn't being given the same treatment in a mystery that Americans deserve answers for. Yes, Jean Pierre, Jean, Jean Pierre. Jean, it's Jean Pierre. Oh, I like saying that. That's French, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. Ill-equipped for the job. Now, Jean Pierre's alternate lies have played a huge role in many Americans claiming she's simply not fit for the job. Critics also point out the White House Press Secretary's tendency to refer to her binder of notes when tough questions are asked. Karine Jean Pierre, overall prices have been essentially flat in our country these last two months. She has to say what, what they tell her to say. You know, by fat checkers not doing their jobs and calling out Jean Pierre's lies, it increases the likelihood of more Americans actually believing what she's saying. The mischaracterizations and inaccuracies from the current press secretary continue to pile up by the day. Jean Pierre is doing so poorly that Americans are now pointing out that even Psyche or Saki wasn't this bad. Yeah, well, my goodness. It's just, I don't know. One thing after another. Here's my article. Speaker, come on, Nancy, come back up here. We want to hear what you've got to say. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi is facing black backlash from Republicans after she extended proxy voting in the House till after the midterm elections, with critics arguing that she is following the political science, not acting based on actual evidence. The House Speaker announced her actions in a Dear Colleague letter sent to members of the House of Representatives on Friday. Pelosi claimed that she was extending the practice of proxy voting due to the COVID pandemic. Proxy voting is the process 
by which a member of Congress who expects to be absent from a vote gives permission to a chairman, ranking member, or possibly another member to cast a vote on his or her behalf, according to the Bipartisan Policy Center. The practice will be allowed to continue until November 10th, which is conveniently two days after the upcoming midterm elections. Mm -hmm. A fact which led Congress Congregational Congressional Republicans to point out that the timing coincides with campaign season, allowing lawmakers to spend time on the campaign trail while claiming they cannot be present to do their jobs out of fear of COVID. Well, critics also argue that the move contradicts President Joe Biden's recent declaration, declaration that the pandemic was over. Yeah, we saw that. We heard that. We read that. <laughs> in light of the notification by the sergeant at arms in consultation with the office of attending physician that a public health emergency is in effect due to a novel coronavirus I'm hereby extending the covered period <clears throat> for proxy voting until November 10th of 22 Pelosi wrote in a letter to her colleagues in a statement on Friday Representative Mike Gallagher blasted the letter, calling out the House Speaker for allowing lawmakers to forego the most important component of their job, and that is to be there to vote, not by proxy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh. Earlier this week, President Biden claimed that the pandemic was over. Gallagher says it seems everyone but Speaker Pelosi agrees. By extending proxy voting, Speaker Pelosi continues to allow members to forego the most important component of their job, voting, and lie to their constituents in the process. The day when Republicans take back the House, eliminate this unconstitutional and unethical practice can't come soon enough. The Wisconsin Republican also cited testimony he had given before the House Rules Committee and a resolution he had authored which would put a stop to proxy voting. House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy also called out proxy voting, vowing that Republicans will end the practice as part of their commitment to America agenda should they regain control of the House following the November midterm elections. Let's hope. Let's pray. The Commitment to America champions policies to restore voters' confidence in Congress starting with ending Speaker Nancy Pelosi's proxy voting abuse of a power that allowed 90% of the House Democrats to get paid without needing to show up for work. The GOP congressman wrote in a, in a opened for the New York, opted for the New York Post. Other Republicans took to Twitter to criticize Pelosi's decision. The big guy said, come on man, pandemic is over fully vaxxed and, cow and and can now get fifth shot. That's Representative Thomas Massey wrote. Nevertheless, Pelosi extends proxy voting due to novel coronavirus till the week of the election. Thomas Massey, the big guy said, come on man, pandemic is over. Fully vaxxed, can now get fifth shot. Nevertheless, Pelosi extends proxy voting due to novel coronavirus till the week of the election. In light of the attached notification by the sergeant at arms in consultation with the Office of Attending Physician that a public health emergency is in effect due to a novel coronavirus, I am hereby extending the covered period designated on January 4th, 2021 Pursuant to section of House Resolution 8 until November 10th of 2022. Sincerely, Nancy Pelosi. Hasn't anyone told Pelosi that Biden said the pandemic is over? That was done by Rep. Darrell Is Issa, ISSA, Republican out of California. He tweeted that. <laughs> Oh my God. We had a member voting from his boat on vacation. Proxy voting for Congress is a ripoff. Congress needs accountability, said uh, Representative Tim Burchett from Tennessee. 
We've had a member voting from his boat on vacation. Proxy voting for Congress is a ripoff. Congress needs accountability. Republicans have been calling out the process of proxy voting for some time now. Former Rep Representative Doug Collins reappeared or appeared on Fox News several months ago to condemn the practice, calling it a Pelosi power grab, which it is. It sure is. You can't call it anything else. Oh, my goodness. Well, I've got more stuff to look up and read, and um, this is uh, video number one. I'll be back. <laughs> I had a good day. I hope y'all had a great day. But it was pretty windy here, but uh, <clears throat> I got a lot of rest and took care of my four-legged babies, and everything went cool. So uh, I'm going to say bye, and I'll be back later. God bless you.